This presentation is in fulfillment of assignment one for the reflective reflexive practices in technology enhanced environment EDLM 6200 by Sasha Goodrich. The lesson plan seeks to introduce tutors at a higher education institution the principles of university design for learning. It also sought to encourage tutors to utilize university design principles in their course development and their lesson planning activities. It also sought to employ reflective practices using digital tools or emerging technologies to encourage tutors to examine their unexamined judgments, interpretations, assumptions, and expectations. It is believed that employing reflective practices, teachers will subject their own beliefs and practices on infusing universal design for learning into their courses or lessons to critical examination. The senior tutors, tutor ones, and course coordinators will be the target group of the Universal Design for Learning seminar. This target group is considered adult learners. Three types of objectives were used in writing the lesson plan. These are the cognitive, affective, and psychomotor. These objectives were provided to guide the learning process and determine student expectations. There were nine objectives utilized in the lesson plan, three objectives for each type of objective outlined. An example of a cognitive objective is discuss the principles of universal design for learning and the technology that can be used to implement the principles within a lesson. An example of an effective objective would be demonstrate an appreciation for the value of UDL principles in course development by incorporating them into a lesson plan. And finally, an example of a psychomotor objective would be create a reflective blog to record the experience of adapting the traditional lesson to, impl to implement UDL, a UDL principle. The lesson has many stages. The lesson started with a set induction, which consisted of posing a question the question being, what does UDL stand for using a polling app called Slido? The lesson then progressed to the motivating activities that introduced the concept of UDL principles via video presentation. The tutors were asked questions based on the video to elicit understanding and reflection. This was followed by the orientation activities, which outlined the, the objectives of the workshop and the format of the workshop. Information activities followed the orientation activities. The participants watched a video on, UDL, on a UDL principle and were placed in, on UDL principles and were placed in groups based on the UL the principle of their choice. Each group was given an activity sheet with reflection questions. After the information activities, the application activities came next. In the application activities, the, the, the learners or participants were given the main task, which is writing a lesson plan using writing a lesson plan incorporating UDL principles in the lesson plan. The activity will start in the seminar but will continue asynchronously where the tutors would upload the lesson plan when completed onto a wiki or discussion forum for the other groups to give feedback. Then follow the evaluating activities. 
They had group evaluating activities and individual evaluating activities. The group evaluating activities consisted of students had to record their discussions and they then had to create a podcast based on their recordings and then they had to post that to discussion forum for groups to provide feedback. Students also had to write a group or write a reflective blog piece if they did not want to do the podcast and post that to their blog. Each participant um, had to write a reflective piece on their experience of implementing UDL principles into a course or the lesson plan from their journal writings. Alternatively, students could create a story based on their journal writings using a story um, boarding tool and this would be and this would be added to the group web blog. Students will also complete a self-assessment. Learning resources were utilized in the design of the lesson. Most of these resources were emerging technologies. Constructivist belief in student engagement. Hence, the learning resources employed were designed to engage and cause learners to explore their beliefs and assumptions about universal design for learning principles the use of learning design the use of learning resources employed in the workshop according to contracted theorists is vital because learners perceptions appreciations and beliefs are framed in worlds of their own making that learners accept as reality and the learning resources were used to con allow learners to confront their perceptions, appreciations, misconceptions and beliefs. According to the constructivist paradigm, knowledge is created through reflection. Hence, the learning resources selected facilitate reflection in action and reflection on action. Reflection in action is reflecting when you are engaging in an activity, action, or experience. While reflection on action is reflecting after the activity, action, or incident has occurred. The learning resources were divided into two categories, activity resources and reflection resources. The activity learning resources in the lesson consisted of a polling tool, which was Slido, video presentations on universal design for learning, recording of the discussions using a multimedia tool, activity sheet with questions and lesson plan activity. Reflection and resources in the lesson plan consisted of podcast, a web blog, discussion forum or wiki, reflective questions, questioning or prompt questions, rubrics and self-assessment as well as group feedback. Using Sklon's theory of reflection, reflection in action and reflection on action, the learner resources can further be divided, divided into reflection in action and reflection on action learning resources. Reflection in action resources. The set induction slight you utilize Slido to ask a question and this prompt was used to stimulate interest and motivate the learner. There was also recordings of group discussions. 
using the watch while they watch inf the information videos on UDL and then they engage in group discussions with reflective questions on an activity sheet. The tutors would be would would be asked to video record the discussion for reflection. Kerr and Pitches explain that using video recordings is an expressive mode of reflection that can assess assess practitioners' inner thoughts and beliefs. Farrell and Kennedy 2020 noted that teachers can transcribe relevant aspects of the recording to reflect upon to assist them in understanding their practice. Hence, the final and the main activity on the reflection in action was the lesson plan. Reflection on action. Reflection on action utilized tools such as wiki, web blogs, peer assessments, and rubrics to encourage to, to encourage the tutors and uh, subject matter experts or um, subject matter coordinators to engage in reflective learning. Mansi stating that blogs can be used to help learners make connections between assignments and experience through reflection. This connection is made. When this connection is made, it can increase student grasping of the content. Reflective journey helps students express their thoughts, beliefs, and opinions on learning during the learning process. It can also increase resilience to emotionally challenging situations and improve communication in emotionally demanding situations as well. Rubrics can be used as an assessment tool of the level of reflection um, of the level of reflection in reflective writing. Rubrics can be used to capture learners' level of development and assess students' level of development. Self-assessment. Self-assessments are used in the lesson plan. Assessment and group assessments are used in lesson plan to help the learners gauge their own learning, understand their own growth and development, and take responsibility for their own learning. Peer assessment was utilized in the lesson plan. Each group task was to produce a lesson plan incorporating one UDL principle of their choice. Each group then had to provide feedback on each other's on the other group's lesson plan. In peer assessment, the learners learn to critique each other and provide an atmosphere of mutual learning for those receiving and giving feedback. Reflective questioning was used in a lesson plan to encourage the tutors to think about their courses in light of the UDL purpose and principles and encourage them to explore their knowledge, skill, experience, attitudes, and values towards UDL principles. It consisted of a series of guided questions utilized to help learners to reflect on the underlying attitudes and positions and stimulate learners to reject misconceptions and questions and question their knowledge and understanding. A number of changes in the teaching approaches must be embraced to implement these learning resources effectively. These are the teaching philosophy, perspectives on learning, participative learning, and technology. The view of philosophy surrounding teaching, knowledge, and learning with the utilization of reflective practices would change. Traditionally, teachers see their role as an authority in the content area and students as passive learners to be filled. The utilization of reflective teaching methods promotes a constructivist, constructivist model where the learners see, are seen as active participants in creating knowledge who can think for themselves, who can convert knowledge into action and change, and construct their personal realities. On this premise, the lesson plan adapted teaching approaches that engage learners, that, and, that engage learners and that allow them to explore their beliefs, assumptions, challenge ideas, and provided opportunities for experimentation, assessment, and facilitate reconceptualization. 
in the lesson plan, students will be creating their own knowledge by means of audio artifacts from their discussions and writing a, a journal piece and engaging in assessment activities. Another approach to learning would need to be adopted. Learning is just not consuming content, but about behavioral change. In other words, theory is in use is more important than knowing the theory. The use of rubrics will capture the degree of development that has occurred in the learner and the reflective writing pieces. Collaborative learning strategies or participant learning should be adopted over individual, independent, and isolated learning. In terms of collaborative learning, the lesson plan ensures students are working in collaborative groups and not working independently. The plan consisted of many collaborative activities, such as discussion, reflect, discussing reflective questions, a group blog, a group podcast, and the discussion forum. It is important to understand that knowledge is constructed through engagement both with ideas and with others. One other factor that would need to change is the view of technology. Technology can be used to support reflection. Hence, different types of media can be used to assist students in reflecting and growing. Muncy noted that one benefit of blogging versus paper journal is the ease of accessibility of the blogs and the ease of providing feedback for the tutor. The writer incorporated emerging technologies in the lesson plan. These are um, cell phone to record discussions on the use of UDL to create a podcast, the use of blogs um, to post group reflections, discussion forums, and the use of peer and self-assessment. It has many benefits. To the learner, journaling is a tool that can develop reflective learning, which is um, considered the interaction with and applying what learners learned to their life, their own life experiences. Reflective journaling can also lead to development of reflective thinking. Uh, reflective thinking is a mental engagement of thinking processes to understand conflicting factors in a situation. Another benefit of reflective writing is, it is in the form of reflective summaries, which allows students to build new knowledge as they reflect on a challenge, problem, or situation. Reflective journaling can also, for the tutors, reflective journaling can um, have a time stamp feature that allows tutors to track their students' cognitive development. And blogs are easily accessible with, where tutors can provide feedback to the students' reflections. Blogs are used by tutors to reinforce critical concepts and maintain one-on-one -on -one relationship with students. Blogs can also pre um, provide a platform for reflection and personal improvement. A few there are a few challenges in using reflective writing. Students journal writings can be very descriptive or demonstrate surface level learning and not transformative learning, which is the goal of all reflective practices. One of the drawbacks of journaling is students not expressing their own opinions. To get a good grade, students may write what they believe the tutors want to hear and not express their true perspective, feelings, or thoughts. Discussion forums are tools used to facilitate reflective discussion with peers and encourage collaborative learning. Constructivists believe students develop knowledge when they share their share their experiences with peers. Also, learners are allowed to present their views and engage with others' perspectives, which can be an alternative view to theirs, thereby heightening awareness of what learners' opinions, 
behaviors, and assumptions. Discussion forums have many benefits. These are, it promotes interaction between peers, it promotes collaborative learning and a sense of community as a means of developing new knowledge, encourages deep thinking and practice, allows students to present different perspectives and alternative ways of viewing an issue or problem. Although there are many benefits to this using discussion forums, there are many challenges. One such cha challenge is the familiarity with the use of digital tools. In their study, Boy Smith and Rallis discovered that age and comfort with technology impacted the degree of reflection. Discussion forums have their drawbacks. One identified drawback is that if the instructor is not if the instructor is not actively involved in the discussion forum, student engagement remains at a surface level. In addition, many learners decide not to participate due to lack of tutor presence. Gash Hago, Lavinston, and Avala noted that podcasts are used in educational settings and are considered socially inclusive emerging technologies. Podcasts can promote active learning and student engagement, enhance student learning experiences, promote self-regulation and independent learning, allow students to replay the audio at their own pace to facilitate learning. It allows for flexibility, making content available anytime and anywhere, thereby encouraging, encouraging self-paced learning. Finally, podcasts that contain questions can prompt students to reflect. Student-centered podcasts created during, a, during or outside the class allow students to create new artifacts and apply their knowledge and critical reflection during the production process. However, research has noted that using podcasts in education can decrease student engagement, develop passive learners, and may not lead to improved student learning outcomes. In a study by Ye, uh, one challenge of using podcasts in education is getting students motivated to listen to the recordings. Also, students may not want to understand the content. Researchers are concerned that podcasts may lead to a dependency on technology over time, developing passive learners instead of active learners. There are two types of assessment used in the lesson plan. These are peer assessment and self-assessment. Holwick considers self-assessment as a reflective practice. Peer and self-assessment are valuable tools to utilize during training. There are many benefits of peer assessment. Peer assessment creates a learning environment in which the learner is central to learning and facilitates collaborative learning. Peer assessment also enables sharing of information and interaction and helps learners develop several skills. Four of these soft skills are communication skills, analytical skills, critical thinking skills, and self-management or awareness skills, such as interpersonal, cognitive, and behavioral skills. It also leads to active learning from what is shared, learners can learn from others' peers' strengths and mistakes, avoiding these mistakes in the future and building on their peers' strengths. Finally, peer, assessments build, peer assessment builds teamwork among lead learners, and according to Akadir et al., they, they give students a voice. Likewise, self-assessment has many benefits. It ensures students' autonomy, assesses their strengths and weaknesses, and develops reflective practice to improve the student's personal practice. In both assessments, learners develop the ability to provide and receive more relevant and timely feedback. It also develops teamwork that gives students a voice. Both types of assessment have their challenges. These challenges are students may not understand the criteria or standards to assess other peers and students' motivation. That is why rubrics are important 
to enhance student quality of work. Learners may not see the point of engaging in self-assessment or may not even want to participate in assessing themselves or their peers. Students may undertake self and peer assessment superficially rather than apply the criteria for marking consistently, thereby engaging in superficial learning. Students may lack feedback literacy skills, especially interpersonal skills, to give adequate feedback. One drawback to peer and self-assessment is that these types of assessment challenge the power relations within a classroom. And learners in modern classrooms drive learning. This may make the academic staff feel uncomfortable challenging the power relationship. One of the curriculum development roles is to conduct training sessions to improve tutors' practice within the college. Researchers believe that trainers do not only convey knowledge but play an active role in developing programs and execute plans that encourage learners to improve their practice. The lesson was based on developing a training workshop on using UDL principles in a lesson or a course. The modeling of the reflective, reflexive practices were utilized in the lesson plan would demonstrate to the tutors how to implement reflective practices in their course development and lesson planning. Makimovic and other et al. noted that trainers are professional leaders who organizes, directs, and leads the learning process, guiding leaders to become reflective practitioners and apply content knowledge. Further to this, reflective strategies and technologies can also be incorporated into the college courses. Hence, my role was to create a learning environment and adapt a teaching philosophy and adopt a teaching philosophy that facilitates an authentic learning environment that includes reflection and that engages students. Another role was to create a community of learners. The learning activities incorporated collaborative learning activities where students had to discuss and work together to build a lesson plan and answer reflective questions. Alt noted that collaborative learning practices lead to positive impacts on learning and professional development. The presentation goal was to present a lesson plan on a seminar on universal design for learning at a higher education institution. The presentation highlighted the presentation highlighted the target group, the lesson objectives, the teaching strategies, the theoretical base of the lesson, and the learning resources that were used to plan the lesson. It also placed emphasis on the emerging technologies utilized in the lesson plan. The presentation examined the benefits, challenges, and learning resources used in the lesson plan. Thank you for listening to the presentation.